Hi, hello. Um, so this is a TAC meeting for March 7th, 2024. And we have, oh, we actually have an attendee. Oh, Chris, Chris Lindstrom is an attendee. Will you let her in, Guilford? She probably can't find her panelist invite. Thank you. Okay. Um, Thank you. Kim, do you want to say the little spiel or I can say it? Yes, I can. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of the TAC Amherst TAC is being conducted via remote participation. Okay. So you can take it away. Okay. Um, well, so I sent out the email today. Um, I wasn't even sure that we were going to have a meeting <laughs> this week, but I thought it made sense to have a meeting because we did not meet at all in February and our last meeting was January 11th. And there will be things coming before, possibly coming to TAC either later this month or early next month. So it seemed like a good opportunity to um, just at least check in, say hi and get a few updates because I have been getting emails and have, you know, have other updates. Um, so, I mean, the first thing, as I said in my email, the, the sort of the main item that I had on the agenda in addition to these informational items was um, that that old request from TSO for the TAC input about the North Pleasant Street improvements from Pine Street to Eastman Lane. So we had never written it up because what happened was the TSO chair at the time, George Ryan, who was standing in as a temporary chair, he said, okay, now TAC, you know, you, we're gonna be, you need to get our input to TSO by like early October. And then we're gonna have a public hearing, I'm sorry, a public forum on these improvements in November. But then one, there wasn't any funding for the projects and then they just had other priorities. This was like the last few months of that council, the 20, I guess the 2020, 21 council. And so they, um, it just got pushed off and it got pushed off. And we did our two site visits. You know, I thought that they were very informative but we never wrote up anything formally and we never really had any opportunity to present it. Um, and then in the fall of 2023, you know, there were some items that were coming. One, there were those sidewalk improvements that were made on the west side of North Pleasant Street, right just south of Pine Street, um, that, you know, some of the neighbors were concerned about. And then there was also possibly an item coming to TSO about a bus stop and moving a bus stop there or adding a bus stop. I'm not even sure the details. Um, and so I thought, even though, you know, it's now sort of dated, you know, our evaluation, I don't think that the conditions there have changed that much and that I still just wanted to, you know, kind of close this, get it, you know, have our formal reply. And so um, as these requests come up, you know, before the council um, and TSO that they would at least have that like in their records. Um, and in particular, there was one, um, so last week there was a meeting from, of the community development block grant, um, advisory committee, which decides where the town's community development block rent funds get spent, get allocated to, and they you, they give money to social service projects, but they also can give money to town projects that will um, support lower income, moderate income households and low and moderate income parts of Amherst. And they, um, so um, there had been a proposal from Dave Zomack to fund um, um, extending the sidewalk work that was done in the fall, extending work south in terms of upgrading the sidewalk and adding a crosswalk and a uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacon and some other details. I don't know, Guilford, do you wanna tell us a little bit about that proposal? I mean, where, was like Jason and are you involved with putting it together? Yeah, so it's just basically the same thing you saw before. Okay. You know, it's just sidewalks. We added a couple of crosswalks, but then if you look at the way the the council's 
uh, policy on public way. It, um, it falls under a certain section that they have to approve it. So that's why it's going towards the council or we'll be going to the council um, to approve the crosswalk and I guess widening the sidewalk. I don't really consider that, but they seem to. Um, that, that'll be coming. Right. So, um, so I think, so one of the things is that, um, Kathy Shane was, she yeah. spoke. Are you okay, Chris? Can you hear me? Um, we can hear you a little. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, I just, you were being very where, like, <laughs> where the block grant, I, I didn't, which part of this section are we talking about where those improvements would occur? Uh, so this it starts ahead, it, it pretty much starts where we left off last time on North Pleasant Street, right there by Mary Zala's house, which is also at the north end of Puffton and goes to the all the way past Puffton. And it's is it both sides or it's just that one one side? Uh this time it's both sides. Oh, okay. The part of the um part of the east side is recently improved right because there was a bus stop that was put in there that was um we we did this we did the section from pine street to mary zala's house and that's where we pushed off the we moved a new bus stop oh okay we improved oh, okay. the bus stop okay yeah that was that's great okay um so so i wrote it up um I was just trying to summarize it. So, you know, because we did that two and a half years ago, we actually have had a bunch of turnover yeah. of um, TAC. So we only have three members on TAC who were members then. At that time, we only had five members. So um, Kim and Marcus and I were on TAC at that time. And um, I mean, so I can pull up the memo that I had yeah. kind of drafted and... Right. Um, and if people, you know, if people feel like they didn't have time to look at it and they'd like to, um, you know, review it after the meeting or something, but I figured we could just send it forward to TSO. Oh yeah. So the, the thing about the community development block grant funding is that Kathy Shane, she came to the community development block grant hearing about the proposals and she was very opposed to this project. Why? She said, she said that there, she said that it's too much money that the UMass should pay for it. She also said that the sidewalks aren't that bad and that in her mind that um, it's more important to fix um, the sidewalks that are north of Pine Street and Meadow Street, like going up toward like the access to the North Amherst Library and the business plaza there and things than to fix this particular section. Um, but we don't have a plan on how the road's actually going to be around the library and those businesses there. So I don't think there's any point in putting well, any money into that yet. Well, and additionally, right? as the chair of the CDBG advisory committee commented that the CDBG committee can only respond and review like proposals that they have received. Like they are not coming up on their own with potential future projects. So... It, I mean, it's got to go through that review process. So, um, so it, it if somebody wants to, be, to do a project, go ahead. It also has to be in a in an authorized area, or right? Then, you know, it came a target area. A target so area, yes. The area, Miss the Mary, the area Councillor Shane wants to do is actually outside. There's no target area anywhere in that area. Yeah. I mean, well, we've. I mean, this has been our 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 top priority for the last three years. So, I well, mean, or more. It's been one of our priorities. I think for before I even joined the TAC, like people have talked about it a long time. Yes, but I mean, starting with all those site visits, I mean oh, that yeah, for sure, our priority because the the conditions there are atrocious and people are getting, you know, so many people are using it. That's the main point, right? So many people are using that area and they're atrocious. So, I mean, when I joined the TAC, like the two priorities were East Pleasant Street and North Pleasant, this section of North yeah. Pleasant Street and this section of North Pleasant Street. I mean, you have 
so many, so much, so many pedestrian, like you have all those apartment complexes, not only on North Pleasant Street, but then also yeah. like on Meadow. And now we have the Mill District. Like there's so many people living there. There are a lot of students that are walking there at all hours of days and night. Um, and some, yeah. as we know I mean, from our site visits at the yeah. sidewalks, some of them are terrible. And there's also not enough crosswalks where people are just crossing. And right. things like that so um but i guess particularly because you know because she had made the comment too uh, so i thought that this would be a good time at least to like just get our early review on record yeah not commenting on that specific project yeah but just to I say mean, like we did our review earlier and this yeah, is what we're saying that because she's received a whole bunch of negative press about it from some people that live on the, the section that was done and right so it's yeah. her district or whatever close enough to it that she feels the need to, you know, tide block everything around it. So, yeah. And I think I mean, she's the, also yeah. wearing her finance committee member hat where she's like, well, the money could be spent in better ways. Yeah, I mean, that's a secondary thing. That's just, a, you know, trying to make it not just nimby, but yeah. And which is not, um, which is not, like, we're not, that's not tax rule at all, right, to think about that piece of it. We're thinking about the safety accessibility and so on so yeah we have no no yeah, involvement no with the money yeah. <laughs> we don't we don't worry about money we just make our condition so um, question, if that's okay i understand if you don't want to i'm sorry what's that chris it's, i'm sorry you're having such a hard time can you hear me now yeah okay i'm sorry what were you saying um i do i was curious about the block grant and where that money comes from and what it can be tapped for versus locations where it can't. And I just was hoping for a quick explanation there. Well, as Guilford is saying, it can be used. So it's federal money. Mm -hmm. You know, it probably, I believe it gets channeled through the state. It is used for organizations like direct aid, direct support for organizations that assist low and moderate income individuals. And they can award up to, I don't know if this is a state rule or a local rule or whatever. They're allowed to choose up to five organizations to award those funds to each year. So like this year, they gave money to the Survival Center and you know Center for New Americans and so on. They were providing direct services to low and moderate income people. And then you can also use funds um, for other, like, other projects that will also benefit um, the the target areas, as Guilford said, the economic target areas. Oh, I see. So, so, so we've used, I believe we've used community development block grant funds before, like for example, the improvements on Mill Lane to go to Graff Park. Guilford weren't, wasn't some of that CDBG? It was. Or, or maybe the ones along like East Hadley Road, because those might be target area. Too. It was more East Hadley Road. Okay, yeah. But then... We could use it on Groff Park. Groff. We did it on Mill Lane because it connected the the um, target area to the to the asset is what they call it, or to the area yeah. that. Do you want to see what the target areas are? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing then. Mm -hmm. So this is the town, whoops, each one of these little numbered areas is actually a, um, a census tract from the federal government. So the ones that are highlighted in this little color here, kind of the light green, those are <clears throat> designated areas that you can spend community development block grant money in. And then there's three areas that the town actually outlined, they're in this magenta, there's this orange, and there's this red color here. Those are uh, target areas, which are a little different than um, designated areas because they may include some, they mostly include people in the target areas, but they may include some places out. So th these are the, so there's three target areas, which are um, Pomeroy Village, the town center, and the East Village target area. And then the in income eligible ones are these light green ones here, which you can do if any project you want to in there. So that's what what it is. 
Yeah, thank you. So, so I mean, one thing that the um, CDBG advisory committee said is that they only received one municipal request and that the only request was this request. So, um, and they supported the request. So they made a preliminary recommendation to support the request. And then they had a public hearing and Councillor Shane spoke there as did most of the organizations that they were funding. And then the, at the end of that meeting, the the committee like reiterated that they still supported their original recommendations. I believe that they go next to the town manager um, and that then would also, I believe, go to the town council because it would involve a money monetary um, allocation. No, okay. No, once the town manager makes the decision, he just reports what he made. There's no allocation oh, all right. of funds. Okay. All right, so there we go. Anyway, so um, I can pull up my, um, I can pull up that memo again. I mean, did anybody have a chance? I know I didn't send it very long ago. I did not. Yeah, so, so I mean, I'll just, um, I'll just pull it up on the screen. Um, and if people want to look at it after the meeting and, you know, let me know if you have any edits. Um, I mean, I was basically trying to summarize the situation. And, you know, it felt a little funny that it's like from 2021, but basically what happened is like, it never came back up again and there wasn't any funding. Like, I think there was also the hope that UMass would could fund it, and but that wasn't gonna be the priority ask of UMass. And um, so until the fall, you know, in the initial sidewalk project and then this additional project, you know, it hasn't really been too much on TSO or the council's radar. So, I mean, I was just like documenting all of that. And then, um, so I, you know, I just saying we just wanted to, you know, get it submitted. And, and we said that this has been a priority, you know, that this improving the safety and pedestrian and bicycle accessibility along this court has been a, among tax priority recommended town projects for at least the last five to 10 years. And it's also a priority route for bike and pedestrians in the bicycle and pedestrian network plan. Right. Mm -hmm. And um and then there's a town the memo from the town manager and uh DPW. But as Guilford said, it hasn't really changed that much. So I mean overall, you know, that we I remember from our site visit, you know, and I had notes on all of this, but you know, overall overall it seemed like we liked the project and um it is among our priorities. Um, there were some TAC members at the time, and I remember expressed concern about the the multi-use path, like switching sides of the street. Though I do also understand if that's because, um, just because of the right-of-way and um, wetlands issues and so on like that. Well, yeah, cost reduction as well, right? We were that's being cost-conscious then, so we didn't have to buy so much extra land. Right, right. And I mean, do you remember like the uh, whole section of the eastern side of the street? Like the right of way is really small. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. sidewalk there is yeah. almost like mm -hmm. a little like single track trail. Right. Like you, <laughs> there's almost no. Um, yeah. And then also, I remember. I mean, that we talked about the lighting because you know we walked it in the late afternoon and on the east side of the street, even when it's still daylight, the path is very dark. Yeah, and I think that, and I think that some of that could be related to the um a lot of the trees. Yeah, and it, a lot of and that the was. Yeah. It, and the trees are also in the little um, the band between the road and the sidewalk, like along some of that section, and not, you know, off to the side on the other side of the sidewalk. Which so that creates a canopy issue too. Um, and I don't know, Guilford, if this was still current, but the streetlight inventory that I had, which I know is probably at least 10 years old, but it said that there are currently um, street lights at each of those intersections with the smaller streets. Does that sound right to you? There is. Okay, so, but I think, I mean, maybe it's mainly a vegetation issue too. And I mean, I remember the time I had been to, um, I'd been to a webinar all about like different type of streetscaping lighting and, and I, was wanted to reach out to the people who presented about like what are the options if you if you want to have lower lighting that would be basically below the tree line so that it would be illuminated there because it is really dark um right and, and then 
the sidewalk's very lumpy in parts too, right? And in addition to being kind of narrow, so. Well, and then, you know, we remember we saw, particularly on the east side, that there's all those like encroachment by bushes and trees yeah. and yeah. all those things and where you're like taking up half the sidewalk. <laughs> so, I mean, that could be something, that could be an enforcement issue. Um, and uh, And then, you know, the idea of adding the additional sidewalks I mean, additional crosswalks, uh -huh. which I fully support. So I remember on the site visit that we saw the bus stop and people get off the bus and basically right. people just streamed across the street. And it's at least, I think it's a, a, about at least half a mile between the two crosswalks that are there currently, um, which is just way too far and it's just not safe. And we also know, right, that um, that grad student who was killed, like he was killed I, I believe he was getting off a bus, but he was kind right. of like near a crosswalk. Um, and, you know, supporting crosswalks at the bus stops, which I think is sort of a new brainer. I mean, statewide that the, um, there's a lot of um, injuries to pedestrians and bicyclists in the vicinity of bus stops, hmm. um, in part because sometimes drivers aren't seeing them. So one of the things with the crosswalk if you're looking at the, um, where the bus stop is for the northbound bus, that the crosswalk is actually behind the bus, not in front of the bus, which I think contributes to the risks uh. because people are expecting that people may cross in the front of the bus, similar to like a school bus. But if, the, if it's behind the bus, then the oncoming traffic doesn't see them at all. Um, oh, yeah. so, right. um, and, and we also liked... And I mean, I know that the work was done on the sidewalk, but I remember we also liked the idea of having a crosswalk from like the House of Teriyaki corner to the other corner directly, because currently there is no crosswalk on that side of the intersection on at Pine Street and Meadow Street. You have to go, you have to basically do like the three sides of the rectangle to cross legitimately if you're a pedestrian, instead of just going across like the one side which I understand that that is like a left turn lane and things like that, but but pedestrians are still going to try to take this shortest path and it would be good if there was crosswalks there. And in Guilford, the plans that we reviewed, they did show a crosswalk there. Is that something that the town is still looking at? Not in this project, but yes. Okay. And... um. And so in those plans and in the town manager's memo, it does talk about having the RFBs at a bunch of the crosswalks, which sounds good. And um, and I guess, I mean, just based on my personal experience is that I do think that the RFBs are, can be a huge help. You know, and the yeah. research shows they can be a huge help, but I know that even for me personally, even sometimes when I've been in the middle of a crosswalk with flashing lights, like people haven't stopped. So it's it seems that like other measures that can be taken, like some sections of this roadway are 35 miles an hour speed limits. So mm -hmm. other measures that can be taken to um, make the roadway, make cars go slower, whether the roadway is more narrow, whether there's any raised crosswalks or like other types of things. Um, I don't know, Guilford, you didn't have any raised crosswalks in the plans, did you? There's no raised crosswalks on this, no. So, and, um, and the way the town manager presented it is that there was that option to add the roundabout at the Crestview um, intersection with North Village, which sounds good. <laughs> And then just the idea of having other um, other traffic calming. I mean, I would hope that if some of these measures are implemented, then the town could reduce the speed limits along this corridor from the 35 miles an hour, right? I mean, when we did the site visit, Guilford, I remember you talking about how that road was designed to really like move cars through. Yeah. But but were all those apartment complexes there then? Because, well, not all of them, obviously, like the mill district and things like that. But, I mean, it seems incompatible <laughs> with um, well, no, having I mean, a lot of pedestrian traffic there. I mean, that was the only road between Amherst and Sunderland. So. 
So, and then when the 60s came, they put in 116, the four lane section. And that's also when they started building all the apartments. Hmm. I mean, is that something where the speed limit could be changed, like reduced even without, I mean, there are there is some new guidance now about not using the 85th percentile of speed. But yeah, it seems that Mass DOT is still sort of leaning that way. But, um, and yeah. I don't believe in like artificially reducing the speed limit. But at the same time, I mean, the two intersections have the reduced speed of 25 miles an hour. And it just seems like it would be a really appropriate corridor to just say that the speed limit is 25 all the way along. No, to me. Um, you can do it. I mean, it's not in this project to do it. No, I understand. Yeah. So. And then I just said, you know, I just, so this is basically the whole memo. And then I just, you know, I put in numbers about who was here and who thought it was good and things. So, so there you go. Does anybody have any comments, questions about it? I mean, what do you, do, you, do people want to, look at what I wrote and like send me any feedback and then I can like forward it to the TS TSO and the like the council president over the weekend. Yeah, I'm ready to accept it as it is. Okay. I feel like we've done it. We have <laughs> labored over this thing. Yeah, um, I'm good. Okay. I'm good as well. So. I'm good with it too. I mean, I guess there's just like a huge amount of safety recommendations which it doesn't seem like we we would want every single one implemented like if the roundabout gets implemented then do we need raised sidewalks or oh sure mm -hmm. you know I mean? so that type of thing but i don't know how to i'm I not mean, sure that a recommendation from tac needs to go into that that kind of scenario, or I, I don't know where that type of thing would get vetted. I guess that's just within DPW and the engineers. I mean, we could add a sentence. I could add a sentence to that effect, you know? Yeah. So that's the only thing that struck me is just like, <clears throat> not necessarily saying that every single one of these things. No, right. But, but that was our suggestion <laughs> for the road. I mean, that's what they're asking about. They're, I mean, it seems like, you know, we, I mean, I guess for us, I mean, also, and honestly, I think there's a strength in it being from 2021 because it's something we've been obviously interested in and thinking about actively and taking action on for a while. So, you know, and and like conditions haven't changed there. If anything, They've gotten, you know, there are more people there now. So, and well, maybe that's the preface to the, because um, mm -hmm. because even right, I I think while we were walking through, wasn't even the um the apart the the grad student apartments were not active. That? They were closed. Right. Well, so yeah, now, right, that's right. I remember yeah. those are active now, and so is the the um the new development as well. So if nothing else, it's gotten even you know more populated. So right, we can mention that. So is Guilford? Do you know if that the North Village replacement is now like fully occupied? It's fully open. Whether it's occupied, it is. Is no, right, right, fully open, right. But it is fully open now. So so. You know, and that's more, that's children too. You know, lots of kids. <laughs> right, right, right. Sure. And all the young adults that are there. Yeah, we could mention that too. Okay. Yeah, do you, Pam, do you mean young adults or children? No, I mean kids. I mean, <laughs> well, North North Village, right? It was traditionally family housing. No, I know. I, I yeah, know. Yeah, I yeah. So. That's what I mean. I, I mean, was, they're... it's relative. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I have a, I have an 18 year old. I mean, I don't know if he's an adult, if he's never, ever had a real job. <laughs> so. But, well, yeah. I'm just saying, I mean, <laughs> at, at least 
at least when my kids were in school, there was a school bus that went specific, you know, an elementary school bus that just picked up from there. So there are a lot of kids, young kids there in North Village. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that the number of units may be reduced, but I'm not sure. I'd have to look at that again, but from when North Village was open, but we could mention, yeah. you know, at the time that we did our evaluation and then, and also the mill district is building. I don't, think it's, I don't but... think it's, um, yeah, I don't think it's worth it. No, I'm sure we're good. Yeah. Uh, shall okay. we just note on the, what we have yeah, and sure. send it along? Sounds good to me. All right, cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's just take a roll call. And also, because I didn't take attendance at the beginning um, out loud, so Amber doesn't have that information. Kim Tremblay. So, Kim. So say I. So Tracy Zafi and I. Uh, Kim Tremblay, I. Okay. Marcus Smith, I. Chris Lindstrom, I. Stefan Chich, I. All right. Thank you, guys. Good. I'll send that on then. Excellent. Yay. Uh, you know, ever since 2021, I was like, we have to write this up. We have to write this up. And, but we didn't. So, Thank you, so. <laughs> okay, let me get back to the agenda here. But I mean, they never, you know, it sort of just, it was disappointing how it just never came up again. <laughs> and it just got ignored. So, okay. So the next thing on the agenda was safe reach to school updates and the walk bike rule to school day on May 1st. So I have um, just gotten back out to the parent teams um, and uh, I have, um, I know that the middle school has enrolled for the day. Right. Uh, Fort River is in the, is um, there's a parent who said they would enroll and Wildwood has enrolled. So um, we'll still be waiting for the, um, still waiting for Crocker to get Crocker up. Um, one parent at Crocker, Ethan, seems excited to do, um, like lead a, a group from like the Mission Sibby's parking lot. Um, in other words, from the rotary there, um, down just to kind of celebrate the rotary and that new stretch of sidewalk. So that seems cool. Awesome. And, um, and then, yeah, that's it at this point is just trying to kind of reinvigorate the, um, the troops, but, um, it's working so far. I also have a commitment from Deb Westmoreland and the district to start pushing it out in the district, um, superintendent emails that come out every Friday um, as another way to help push attendance. And so I, we found that very helpful in the fall. So we'll start doing that. Um, I actually didn't confirm with her when, you know, we're still a couple of months out, but um, I'll find out when she's going to be starting that. Um, and that is it at this point. Um, well, thanks for doing that reach out. That's exciting. And uh, maybe Lee Guilford wants to participate. We can get some counselors out there this year, this time. Oh, we should. Um, we definitely have the parent. I think it, parents have a little bit more experience this time. We'd be able to like be welcoming and accommodating to a, a counselor. I don't think that that we could have guaranteed that last fall. So, um, you know. We definitely, Guilford would love to have you. I think it's a ski day for me, so. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, May, May 1st. <laughs> I, I, you know what? Um, I'm going to ask. So my, I know a bunch of kids who are on the environmental, like, committee, at, like, save the environment at the high school. I might see if some of them might want to participate like help shop around or something like that which I think would be yeah that'd be awesome I'm gonna just mention that to them yeah <laughs> interestingly Kim there's an entire project within safe routes targeted towards the high school 
around that this is sort of ambassadorship where um, kids would show up and do walking school buses, you know, a couple days a week in certain neighborhoods. So taking the high school kids and putting them in these sort yeah. of leadership roles to um, lead bikes and walks from neighborhoods. So um, yeah. if that's something that kids are interested in, there's definitely okay. money and other types of things to help build that out a little bit more at the high school, if that's something that that's cool. I'll, I'll let them know because they're always looking for projects. And um, the other great thing about that, I'm just thinking is, you know, because the elementary school starts earlier, it's totally doable, at least yeah. the morning, you know. Yeah. Maybe we could get those high school kids to not drive for a day or something. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> not that. But anyway. Jesus. Well, there is like a dry, you know, a car free day or something. The environmental group. Come on. So. I don't even. <laughs> I do have a question about safe routes and the infrastructure grants. Um, Guilford, do you know um, what kind of timeline we would be on to be applying for those grants and, um, you know, relative to the intersections? And I guess I would just love an intersection update from you generally intersection at the new site of the elementary school and then just where the safe routes infrastructure grant fits into that unless you went skiing Guilford no only on Wednesdays <laughs> so um there's not much of an update on what we're proposing um not at all there's not much uh, but it will, the work will begin at the at the school in the next couple of weeks and April, April 8th, looking at my calendar, April 8th is uh, the day they're going to switch the circulation pattern, which means they're going to close one oh, entrance wow. and only use the other entrance. So the... Uh, all the cool stuff will happen shortly and everybody will get frustrated and everyone will see what a really bad choice of a school site that was, but we'll be stuck. All right, Guilford, you got it. You, you can't keep fighting that battle. I just don't want people to think that we said it was a great place. Yeah, um, I know it is not. <laughs> Bob, so that said, did the engineer's report come out to cover um, suggestions for those intersections and the traffic patterns around that? Um, whatever. Not yet. Okay. So we're still waiting. Yes. Okay. Have we got the engineer report back about Cushman yet? We did, but I sent it back for some clarifying information and I haven't got that. Oh, okay. Back yet. So that was a while ago. So is it on the first iteration or a second iteration, Guilford? Um, it's on its first. Okay. Do you have a time frame for when they'd be uh, it back? Man, I don't know. They're waiting for some. I I I promised them something, and I don't think I've sent it to them yet. Is why it hasn't shown up yet. Guilford, I I don't know if you're even if this is like too deep from where you're dealing, but do you know, I wonder what kind of support or what kind of education the principal is doing at Fort River just to prep the families um, for yeah. the circulation pattern change. So I guess they do, a, like the superintendent does a newsletter yes. on Fridays. It comes yeah. out on Fridays. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I, I've been, there's going to be lots of superintendent letters and stuff coming out Friday on Fridays with information and stuff. Okay. Got it. Well, hopefully the principal, like school administration is reaching out as well because not everybody opens those superintendent updates. So they have lots of, I mean, they're trying to get yeah, it out in lots of ways. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they are. And then how about getting out the word beyond the school? You know, for just um, you'll be, you'll be seeing some message boards going up before they close it. Um, and then it'll say, don't come to Amherst. Go, go nice. around. <laughs> what about a lot of the there was for a while there's been on um 
that bridge, I don't, I don't know what is, is it route nine? There's been, it's been closed for a stretch because like by the enterprise, by the, by the car rental places. Oh, college is street. Done? Is that done? Because that's no, be it starts again, probably in a few weeks. Oh my gosh. So that will coincide with the school. That's going to be a mess. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I think the more um, you know, PR they can do. Does the town have their a PR person again or something? No. But you need to uh, you need you to get that out. For, you know, someone who does that and looking for a job. There's it just went out. Well, if there's any kind of like press release or whatever, I mean, all the local news media will cover it. So no, there should be because of that I mean, double, like issue. It's going to be a yeah. you know the reminder, the bullet, and the. Indie, all that stuff. If there's any announcement? Yeah, because it seems really important to let all the other drivers know too. Wait, just so I'm clear, the section of College Street between Amherst College and the substation, all the way down to Subway. Uh, yeah. No. Well, it's, no. Oh, I mean, Duncan. Wait, where? It's the electrical substation. That. Oh, 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 wow. So that's going to be completely closed two way. No, it'll be it'll be closed off and on and we'll see how if it's two way or just one way or. OK, they yeah, have to... a, lot of, a lot of times you end up having to go on Shumway, you know, like there are all these divergence that hop, are right. happening. And, and don't go. tell us you're going to make Boltwood one way at the same time. Please don't say that. Yes, we start. We start um, Boltwood, and we actually start working on the South Common this this summer too early. Can you leave the street alone for a while, and then no. do that part later? We that the the North Common has to be done by June thirtieth, and then the South Common has to be done done by June thirtieth because mm -hmm. we just take we just take grants and we don't schedule things so. We yeah. and we have another project. We have two more projects which are down by Fort River School, which are supposed to start as well. And um, they they will probably one of them will probably be put off or pushed off if we can. Wow. So Guilford, do you um, anticipate applying for a Safe Roots grant infrastructure? Uh, I imagine we will sometime. I don't really. <clears throat> I imagine at some point. So the those applications are in the fall now. The both, both the yeah. signs and lines grant, which is such a tiny little grant, and is also set up where it's like a reimbursement, not just like giving the money. And then there's also the larger infrastructure grants. Um, but well, we, the last yeah, year they had them both on like a November submit date. Yeah, I mean we don't know what we're doing, so. Right, we got to get the reports and work from there. But yeah, okay. Thank oh, you. I just realized we're missing Joe today. I don't know. Try to reach him. I just want to see a roundabout everywhere. Yeah, me too. I think a roundabout at Crestview would be huge because the next the next roundabout we're pushing is um Amity. Amity. Yeah, but you've already that's already designed, so that's great too. And Wait, then we're the one at Univer University, University of Amity. Amity. Now that oh, it's yeah, being redeveloped. Long, long overdue. Yeah. But you designed it, you. you designed it before, right? And then you said that it, like, the town applied for a grant for Pomeroy instead or well, something. We had a rough design of way okay. back 10, 15 years ago. And then UMass has a final design now. That's so what I thought, that. yeah. And then we're talking about some mini roundabouts on Deep Woods. Some wait, neighborhoods wait. would love mini roundabouts. Wait, wait. That's not right. Heatherstone. Is that in Amherst Woods? At no, the, Heatherstone. You know... Wait, what's the um what's the street where the neighbors are always asking? Just about every street in Amherst. <laughs> I I could I could tell that at the JCPC meeting, so <laughs> but some mini roundabouts would be great. I mean it's really hard to like retrofit the subdivisions where the wides are the roads are so wide. Actually, no, those are easier. No, but if you put in little roundabouts there, I'm saying, because... um, It's easier to do them there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But I meant it's hard to... What I'm saying is it's hard, except for the... There's not much else you can do because those streets are so wide and most people park on the driveways. So 
it does seem like it encourages like higher speeds unless you do those kind of measures and stuff. Yeah. So, okay. All right. So um, let's see. So the next item, we kind of got off a tangent there. The next item was about citizens for a Palmer rail stop. So I received an email from the citizens for a Palmer rail stop group and um, they they included information like links they had from when both the town council and the town manager sent letters of support for having a Palmer rail stop um, for the West East Rail, as it's now called. And, um, and they really wanted to meet with TAC and, and then also, um, you know, build, build coalition about like trying to, to encourage a Palmer rail, a rail stop in Palmer for the West East Rail. But one of my feelings about it was that um, that as an advisory committee, right, and we're not even sure what's happening with TAC exactly, that just like the town manager and the council weighed in before and they said, we really, we think that this is a great idea or if you reach out to UMass and say that this is really important for UMass and other, there's people much more powerful than TAC who their endorsement would have much more power than tax. Um, so I haven't met with them yet, um, but I have talked to some people who are really interested in this. And I guess, so my question on the agenda is just if anybody at TAC, or if we know anybody else who'd like to like volunteer and get like more involved as the West East Rail proceeds. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea of the West East Rail. I just don't know where, I, where you know, a stop at Palmer fits into our scope, you know. That's it. Right. Been, no, I mean, yeah. I mean, they, they seemed very insistent, like we must meet with TAC. And I was like, well, I mean, we do care about it, but we don't have yeah, that much don't. power. And I mean, if they can, if they can promise us to stop in Amherst, then I'm all game for <laughs> meeting with them. But, but then also, yeah. right. I mean, to get like the endorsement from like the UMass chancellor and things just have like a lot more meeting, meaning, um, but they were trying to start oh, up yeah, some sure. meetings and I talked to somebody from UMass who's very interested in this, and uh, he said, "Hey, he, hey, Tracy, you're gonna volunteer to like be part of this?" And I'm like, "Not really, so much." So, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I, I wish they'd get on and just get it done. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, for us. us. I mean, yeah. Stefan, well, are you involved us. on real stuff much for your job, or more transit? Oh, sorry, I was trying to find the unmute button. Uh, I'm uh, involved entirely on the a transit unit. Um, I work okay. uh, alongside people in rail. I mean, not on projects. I mean, right, really right. alongside other in the office. Sure. And uh, you know, I sort of catch up with the new uh, the new director they hired for East West yep. Andy. Yeah. Um, so I see him in the office and we talk about what's going on. I mean, he, he's barely starting that position. Obviously, they're still trying to you know get things rolling with that. So uh, okay. it's just scratching the surface, if that. But um, yeah, I mean. Yeah. What, what was the, did you have a question about it? Are you kind of, uh, no, I mean, I think that they were just um, like looking for like, you know, if tech wanted to volunteer or be more involved or things like that. So, I mean, the, the uh, problem for us is like Springfield and Palmer are pretty much the, you know, at the same amount of time, right? I mean, actually, it might even take longer to get to Palmer than just Springfield. Yeah. So, so Palmer's the town of Amherst, short, yeah. I mean, it's still, you're still talking 30 minutes to get to Palmer. Right, it's true. Right. Maybe a bit longer, which is about the same as it takes to get down to Springfield. So, you know, we're asking for a new stop versus an existing stop. W what are we really trying to push, you know? I mean, I, I do see the benefit of a Palmer station, but for us as the town of Amherst, what does it really bring, you know? But, but the Palmer stop is, would be, headed to Worcester or Boston. I mean, I feel like the the stop in in Springfield, I mean that only goes south, right? So and then yeah, Spring, uh, Springfield goes east west. west. Yeah, Springfield goes east west as well as south. North. There's no east west train there from is Springfield. Not, no. not for no. passenger rail. No. Yeah there is. No, yeah, there you, is. Have to, yeah, you have to you have to go yeah, down to like no, no, no Chicago no, Chicago no. Limited. You go to New yeah. Haven. You have to go down to no, New Haven. Don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. I've the been Chicago on. Limited. Yeah. Yeah, the Lakeshore Limited by Amtrak runs through there twice yeah, a day. It. One inbound, one outbound. Okay. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. 
Yeah. But that's yeah, not really so. work. Only twice a day. That doesn't really work for many kids. Yeah, but it's the same. No, I know. No, but yeah. It's the same corridor. Right, They're using right. the same oh, yeah. track bed for the east west. So, mm -hmm. well, and if any, this, anything. And if the stop is in Palmer, I mean, just as somebody who used to drive to Boston regularly, right? That most people who drive to Boston, they drive from here, they drive through Palmer because it's like shorter. Yeah. So you're more east, and then the rest of your commute is shorter. Right, so. but I'm just saying, from a from a access to the railway perspective, mm -hmm. going yeah. to Palmer or going to Springfield, there really isn't much in it mm, true. in terms of distance and time and everything. Right. So for us to say, hey, let's put in a as a town of Amherst, right. let's yeah. put in a new stop. It doesn't make a lot of sense. As just a general person thinking about access to rail, it makes perfect sense. So I mean, it's six hundred one half of me. And there was a Palmer stop before, right? So, wasn't there? I mean, the train, the, I thought the trains had to change in Palmer and things, like if you do north-south rail. Let me see. I, I would like to hear from the group. Okay. Uh, I think that, um, and largely just because, I mean, transportation advisory, yeah, I get what Marcus is saying. You know, we are geographically bound to Amherst, but I'm just, you know, it's like, I just oh. thought of three people who work in Boston that I know, actually four, now that I'm thinking about it, who work in Boston, you know, in hybrid roles. Um, and, you know, obviously I can't volunteer them, but I think there are quite a few people who work in Boston. Well, right. I mean, when I used to commute to Boston, I when I took the train, which I tried to do most of the time, is I would take one of the commuter rails. So I would drive like halfway in. And then I would take like the Worcester line, Worcester yeah, line yeah. Or, you know, or there's a Fitchburg line or something. You have to go like halfway. My neighbor down the street yeah. takes a Bog connector or something. Into That's a bus. That's actually pretty amazing. Bus into Worcester. Worcester, right. Yeah. Um, and wait, she doesn't, your neighbor doesn't take the train after that, do they? Because that's a really long day. But He's on faculty at Northeastern. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. And he lives. All here. right. Well, why don't we? I mean, do people agree that we would invite them to invite the citizens for Palma Real Stop to come? Yes. Sure. Okay. Sure. I mean, and then right. I just I wonder if it makes sense to also try to get somebody from TSO, or maybe if we could combine a, like a briefing. Mm -hmm. Sure. With committees, not just us. Right. Together, um, just to get a sense of some of these and raise some of these issues like you know honestly for us I, I guess I'm with Marcus um going east feels natural when I'm driving but if I'm just going to take the train into Boston I could easily go to Springfield so it just seems like vetting some of those things would be helpful and and interesting and worthwhile for all of sure. us Sure. well so we did have somebody come like I don't know a year a year and a half ago on east west rail so that's fine that sounds good, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'll reach out to them then. And I mean, also, so when I got the email originally from the group, I did reach out to the town manager. And at that time, and I said, well, the, I mean, the on their website, they have like the letter that the town manager sent before and the letter of support from the town council. And I just said that, you know, you and the count, like to the town manager, the him and the council weighing in, like has more weight than TAC weighing in. And is the count, is this something that the council would take up again? Right. And he said, Hey, well, he said, well, one of the former town managers was really into this. And Tracy, do you want to get involved? <laughs> so I don't know, but um, I don't think it's like directly tied to TAC, except for provide, looking at alternative modes. Um, and there is also um, Anna Devlin Gothier is also one of her roles on the council is connecting on like state issues and you know legislative issues and things like that. So I could also reach out to her just to see maybe she wants to in that role she wants to lead something you know on the council. Oh, and then I do have to go in three minutes and I apologize. So, no, that's fine. And so we can. I think we're good. So why don't we? I mean, I really didn't have too many other updates. Um, the JCPC did hear two resident capital requests today, one from Janet McGowan about a speed radar sign near her house and one from Jeremy Anderson for speed radar signs near all the schools and school 
zone signs. Um, we don't have a liaison yet. Hopefully the council will assign one later this month. And um, that's it. We don't really have too much else. And I'm happy to end the meeting early because I have to drive to Albany. So <laughs> be like, um, because once you leave, Chris, we won't have a quorum. So yeah, I got I don't go. think I'm I don't like... think anybody will be sad if we leave a little early. No, I think we're good. Um, and our but, main um, item that's... was that memo, right? So that was great. Um, what do we think about when we could? I mean, some I think it may make sense to wait you know, for our next meeting until we have some stuff from TSO. Yep. TSO's next meeting is the 14th. Um, the council's next meeting is the 18th and then they're gonna meet again on the 1st. I mean, do we wanna try to meet, do we think we should meet again in March or just wait until the beginning of April? I agree with waiting. Yeah. And Aaron, Gil yeah. And Guilford, do you have items you're bringing? So the items will probably go to the council on their first council meeting, which is which is at the 18th. Uh huh. And then they'll be sent to TSO. So TSO probably won't send ask for your input until. Well, April. right. So TSO, they're scheduled to meet on the 14th, and then they're scheduled to meet on the 28th. So they'll they won't get it so. until the 28th if the council doesn't get it until the right. 18th. 18th uh-huh okay because council council could theoretically just say yes we should do this and not send it anywhere which would be like a great thing wouldn't it <laughs> yes we agree do but it how many layers of bureaucracy do we oh. want is that what you're saying <laughs> no, yeah. one would be nice <laughs> yeah i understand um well, I guess if TSO gets things, why don't we tentatively say that we could meet on the 4th? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, I mean, if we don't get anything, and I'll check in with TSO too. And I think at least by the 4th, we should have a liaison. And we'll know a little bit more about the JCPC right. stuff. So, okay. And I will check into Joe and see what happened to him. So, I mean, he did graduate from Amherst College, but he is seen in the area. Yeah, I just saw him them the him and his daughter this weekend in at his house so oh okay coming out of his house so so we say joe yeah <laughs> yeah so that's so like, that's, and um actually the um relatedly is uh the town manager just sent out an email about um asking for like members of committees so i mean tac does have one vacancy mm -hmm. so we can encourage if you know anybody who's interested we can encourage them to apply and um the town manager does want to the transportation commission stuff i've met with him a few times he wants to bring it back to tack for feedback before it, he, he takes it to the council right so he was planning if they had had their regular meetings the council meetings he was planning to do that for today but yeah. i'll check in with him and i'll see if we can hopefully he can get something to us on april 4th right okay thank you all Thanks. All right. Thanks, everyone. Right. Thanks, Guilford. Safe drive. Right. Thanks, Amber. Okay. Bye bye.